In the US, $10 isn't usually gonna get you much. At least, not unless you shop at a dollar store where you could get things like soap, laundry detergent, tin foil, a roll of paper towels, and maybe a pack of Oreos, all for roughly $10. It's a pretty good deal, right? At least, that's what the sheer prevalence of dollar stores in the U.S. may lead you to believe. They number at just over 33,000. There are more dollar stores than there are McDonald's, and more Americans shop for groceries at dollar stores than they do at Whole Foods. Dollar stores have conquered America in an era where a retail apocalypse is slowly decimating brick-and-mortar retail shopping. But the spread of these dollar stores is deeply tied to issues of income inequality in the U.S. And it's argued that these institutions not only benefit from poverty, but also that they perpetuate it. It's even led to some communities to limit the spread of dollar stores in their towns. No more dollar stores! We want grocery stores! So how did the dollar store conquer the U.S. and what is their real impact? There are three major dollar store chains in the U.S. There's Dollar General, and then there's Dollar Tree, which acquired Family Dollar in 2015 for eight and a half billion dollars. These stores all have origins in the South, dating back to around the 1930s and 1950s. All offer extremely discounted prices, even if most stores don't charge exactly a dollar anymore. Yet, it was in a post-World War II economy where dollar stores would begin to thrive among some of the biggest discount chains of today. Before World War II, large chains and discount stores were not commonplace. It's because antitrust laws favored small businesses and manufacturers. Things like resale price maintenance allowed a manufacturer to set a minimum price for their products. And it required manufacturers to extend that price across state lines. This meant that they could control the value of their product. And it also meant that stores couldn't negotiate for discounts by buying products in bulk. These practices were codified into law with the passing of the Miller Tidings Act in 1937 and with the passage of the McGuire Act in 1952. However, those laws would soon begin to break down. In 1975, Congress passed the Consumer Goods Pricing Act, eliminating resale price maintenance legislation. Ideologies surrounding economic prosperity and antitrust laws were also shifting during this time all due to a man named Robert Bork, a legal scholar who was at one point up for a Supreme Court seat in the 1980s. He spearheaded a new economic vision for antitrust laws, from one where small businesses were institutions to protect, to one where only the evolution of big business would bring American prosperity. We basically turned antitrust on its head. Instead of using those tools to disperse economic power, we have actually used them to endorse further consolidation on the theory that it would be more efficient and produce lower prices. This played a large role in the momentous growth of big box chains like Walmart, Target, and Kmart. This massive consolidation in food retailing that we've allowed to happen through policy choices, what that has meant, it has undercut these local family-owned supermarket businesses, really leaving them without any options and opening the way for the dollar store chains. The depleted main streets of America resulted in opportunity for dollar stores. These micro discount retailers moved in to serve communities on a local level. This is because they differed from those big box stores in one key way. They've expanded so rapidly and clearly there's a need that they're fulfilling. You go to Walmart to stock up and get all the things you need where you go to the dollar store to get what you need today. Which proved to serve an economy under duress. It was a manic Monday in the financial markets. Now it's official, we are in a recession. In 2008, as the financial crisis crippled the livelihoods of millions of Americans, dollar stores broke into a larger market and raked in quite a bit of cash. From 2007 to 2009, while the Great Recession enveloped the United States, each of the major dollar store chains saw increases of net sales in the billions. They are astounding numbers for a place that sells items at such a low cost. And that's because dollar stores rely on specific metrics that allow them to grow in the face of economic distress. First, dollar stores are cheaper to open, smaller in scale, and don't aim to serve as many people as a Walmart does. 
A new dollar store costs only $250,000 to open, while a new Walmart costs about $15 million. Dollar stores also employ fewer people, which allows them to keep their costs down. While a locally owned grocery store employs about 14 people, a single dollar store will only employ eight or nine workers. Also, dollar stores trick customers into thinking they're getting a good deal. While you may think that you're scoring on a price for a jug of laundry detergent or a roll of tinfoil, the truth is that these items are often packaged with less product, which requires customers to return for a replacement item over and over again. These tactics worked best in an economy that was strapped for cash. Yet the stores have been growing and spreading throughout the country beyond the perils of the Great Recession, and as the country experienced its largest period of economic growth pre-COVID-19. Dollar Tree locations jumped by nearly 4,000. Family Dollar, which is now owned by Dollar Tree, jumped up to more than 1,000 new locations, despite the closure of a few hundred stores in 2019. And Dollar General has seen their store locations more than double, from about 8,000 stores to close to 17,000. This exponential growth lends itself to a darker side of why dollar stores have been so successful. They really deliberately target low-income neighborhoods and neighborhoods of color and kind of prey upon a lack of political power in those neighborhoods. And the, the building of multiple stores close together is a kind of strategy to monopolize a market uh, and keep out fresh food operators. These maps from the Institute for Local Self-Reliance show dollar stores congregating in areas where there's a high percentage of families below the poverty line. And these maps show the percentage of those families who identify as Black or African American. That's the issue. Is they are they are happily joining in on this process of kind of extracting wealth and resources out of very marginalized communities. Dollar stores also show up in places where fresh food is largely inaccessible or unavailable. These places are called food deserts. But Jerry Shannon instead calls this retail redlining, as this term implies that it didn't happen by accident. As the Institute for Local Self-Reliance reported back in 2018, the absence of grocery stores is, in turn, a direct result of a history of racial discrimination by banks that have been less likely to lend to African-American entrepreneurs and by supermarket chains that have tended to bypass black neighborhoods. Many of these dollar stores have historically not offered their customers options to healthy fresh food or produce, and have sometimes been the blame for the shuttering of local grocery stores. While the success of dollar stores in America is thanks to decades of policy changes, it is also thanks to a growing wage disparity in this country, something that disproportionately affects people of color. Dollar stores fulfill an immediate need for many of these people. Yet, there is a demand for more long-term solutions. Dollar stores are not simply a symptom of economic hardship, but we found that dollar stores are also a cause of economic distress. In 2020, ProPublica and The New Yorker published a report about the growing danger for employees working in dollar stores. It found that calls for the safety and security of workers have fallen flat time and time again, despite multiple murders and robberies. It's just added another reason why communities may be looking to limit dollar stores. What do you have to do to make a steak cost a dollar, right? Like, what do you have to do to people as workers, what do you have to do to animals in order to be able to sell a steak for a dollar? And the idea is it doesn't matter if you are unemployed, your benefits are being slashed, you can't find a job because the idea is, but you can get steak for a dollar. And that supposedly means that everything's working, right? That this society is fair and just and it's working when really what it tells us is how deeply things are not working. The actions of the ever-growing dollar store market have been met with contempt from some community members and city officials. No dollars, no! Shame on you! Places like Oklahoma City and Tulsa have already passed legislation limiting new dollar stores. And officials in New Orleans, Cleveland, and Fort Worth are exploring plans to do the same. These measures are important to at least curb the extreme spread of dollar stores, and advocates believe that in doing so, there will be more space for local grocers and businesses to thrive. But a lot of the places where these dollar stores are 
thriving in urban centers might be in a process of gentrification, right? So to say, kick out the dollar store might really be about kicking out the low income residents as well who rely on those stores, right? So this solution is not always perfect. Dollar store chains are responding to these critiques in different ways. In a statement provided to Cheddar, Dollar Tree Incorporated made a point that their stores, Dollar Tree and Family Dollar, are meant to complement grocery stores and touted the over 35,000 people who were promoted into new positions within the last year. And as for Dollar General? I mean, I cannot stress this enough. Race has nothing to do with our real estate model whatsoever. So regardless of what their gender, their race, their socioeconomic status, if they're in a rural community or a highly metropolitan one, our mission is one that really transcends all of that to be able to help folks save money and stretch their budgets. And that's really our main focus and continues to be that. There is also the Dollar General Literacy Foundation, which has been providing educational opportunities to the communities they serve since 1993. The company has also pledged $5 million to accelerating racial equity throughout the country. This is not any type of predatory way of looking about our business model. We come about our ability to serve customers from just that, that mission of serving others to be able to help customers that simply are not served by other retailers and may not have other affordable or nearby retail options. Dollar General has also started to add fresh produce to its shelves. In 2018, we launched a new merchandise initiative called Better For You that right now is in about 6,000 stores. We also have produce in about 750 stores across the country with plans to add that to just shy of 1,100 by January. It's important to remember that we're not a grocery store. We're there to be able to help people fill in and not fill up. Dollar stores make it possible for many on the margins of society to make it another day but advocates against dollar stores are asking for something deeper because it really comes down to addressing the root causes of why dollar stores are so successful in the first place. Some of it has to do with addressing concentrated corporate power through federal antitrust laws. Some of it has to do with changing our banking policies because a big reason that local grocers who would, you know, would like to be serving these neighborhoods are unable to do so is because they can't get capital, because they can't get a bank loan. And beyond that, I don't like making them the boogeyman or the bad guy in the story because they do really serve a vulnerable population. But I think the fact that folks have to rely on those types of stores is emblematic of larger changes that need to happen. So the solution isn't getting rid of dollar stores. The solution is let's fight for um, better wages for folks, more job security, better health care that remove the need for dollar stores to begin with. So maybe one day there won't be a great need for dollar stores. But for now, dollar stores aren't going anywhere. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and make sure you check out the links below to find out more about how dollar stores conquered the United States.